everyone and welcome to this Friday Facebook Live. Apologies, it's a bit delayed. I realize my phone is a little bit unsynced with my computer time, which is something I'm going to have to fix. Now, so for those who you who don't know me, and please do uh, make sure that you wave and say hello, because I love to see who's online. So my name is Serena Bird. I'm founder of this Joyful Business Club, but also of the Joyful Frugalista and the Joyful Fashionista. So I'm mostly joyful. I'm not always happy all the time, but um, I certainly am very big on sharing the joy of, th th of things that are happening. Now, part of my journey has been leaving the public service to go and, and do my own startups and to do all the things that are there. Hello, Lord Joe. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I know my thoughts are with you at this time and it's lovely that you can make it today. Um, so my journey has been leaving the public service to go and do my own startups and then more recently going back to the public service full time, at least for a little while. Um, but while I was still working in the public service, I started to build up my side hustle and I did this mainly by freelance writing and um, I know I spoke uh, on the last Facebook Live I did about how to transition from the public service to private and the sort of things to be mindful of when you're doing side hustles while you're still working full time including making sure you get appropriate approvals. So I certainly had that in place but then the first time I was asked to write someone just said to me, oh can you just send through an invoice? and then we'll pay you. And let me say that nothing is more scary to someone who hasn't really had a paying client before than just send me an invoice. In fact, possibly the only scarier thing is, and how much do you charge? The two things seem to be quite scary um, and they are combined <laughs> in the form of an invoice. Now, I thought it, it was just me, but in recent months I've had at least three people ask me, how do I do an invoice? In fact, now that I think of it, it's probably about four. Now, why is this so scary? Well, it's scary for a number of reasons because you're new to business, you're not familiar with how business works and so you're not sure what is the industry norm, what is normal and what is use, use, usual. Like usually when you're in business or you know in, in any type of your life, you're used to receiving invoices to be paid, receiving tax invoices. You're not used to issuing themselves. So you don't really know what's normal, what's usual and so forth. And secondly, you want to appear really professional, especially if you've got a new client. You want to show that you know, you're know you in business, you're a professional, you know what you're doing, you've got it all figured. So you don't want to send them an invoice where they go, no, that's not what we wanted. Now, in reality, people are paying you for your services and what you offer um, so that your, your invoice isn't actually a reflection on your professionalism. But, you know, I understand that sort of feeling of worry about it. Worry about making sure that you get everything right so that you're doing things, you know, in an appropriate business way. And of course, ultimately, that you get paid because that is also important too as part of the value exchange. So today I'm going to talk about um, a few things. I'm going to start by talking about what you need to have in an invoice and then I'm going to start to talk about the options for invoices going from very basic, very easy and free to medium and then to paid versions. So we're going to look at the, that whole stream because when you're first starting um, as a side hustle in particular, like your first client might only be say paying you $150. So you might want to spend all of that plus more on having a system just to capture that. So I just want to take us through the whole continuum of what these things are. But it's worth thinking about what actually does need to go into an invoice because that'll make it a lot easier for you when you're creating. Um, I want to acknowledge we've got a few people here in addition to Lord Joe. We've also got Casey's, Kui Chua and Alison. So hello everyone and make sure to put in your questions. I really would like this session to be um, a really open one about everyone sharing what they actually do or what their problems and issues are. Um, I left a comment in the event to that extent too, but everyone will do things differently, just like everyone has different business systems. So there is actually no right answer with this. But let's start at the beginning. You know, what is an invoice? 
So usually you send a tax invoice to someone when you want to get paid for services that you or goods, services you've rendered, goods you've provided or that you are going to provide. And so it usually has to say invoice or even better tax invoice at the top. So that's kind of number one. Um, secondly, you need to put in your name or even better, your business name. Now, that might seem fairly easy, but those who are new in business, sometimes you can freak out just by even, oh my God, what do I put in my name for my invoice? That can be kind of a... Um, a deal breaker for some people and something that you know prevents them even doing this step but it's not really that hard uh, linked to that is um, an ABN an Australian business number now do you need an ABN to issue an invoice or not no you don't um, but it is good to have one now let me explain I've had someone, for instance, who was a student who was doing cleaning for me. She didn't have an ABN. She didn't um, need one at all. Uh, she was a student who was doing a bit of casual work. She wasn't planning to do that as her business longer term. Now, the ATO, the Australian Tax Office, has advice on how to apply for an ABN. It's not hard, like it really is not hard to apply for an ABN. Um, and I think it's free. It's, it, you ha it costs money to, um, to register for a business name, but for an ABN, it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's free and it's not hard at all. If you are earning more than or $75,000 a year through your business, it is a legal requirement to register for an ABN. However, if you're earning less than that, it's not really a legal requirement, but if it is going to be a real and serious business undertaking, like not just um, I'm doing a few photos for someone as a bit of a favor and sending them an invoice. I don't know whether I'm going to do this long term or not, or I'm doing a bit of cleaning on the side during COVID. It's not going to be what I'm doing long, long term. Um, if it is a serious business undertaking, it is a very good idea to have an ABN. And in fact, it's also a very good idea to register your business and do all the appropriate things. Now, with registering an ABN, it's fairly easy, like I said, and I'm pretty sure it's free. And you can also register as a sole trader, um, which is fairly low in terms of the legal expenses and so forth. So if you're serious about your business um, and serious about it growing, even though it's only small yet, it's probably a good idea to have an ABN. And then on your tax invoice to use that name that you use when registering for the ABN. But that said, both of those things are not don't put off doing an invoice because you don't have those things basically because you want to get paid for your work so if it's your first real client and it's first real job and you're not really um, set up still do an, an invoice anyway a tax invoice and don't worry about the fact that you mightn't have an ABN or a fancy sounding business name just do it the other key thing to put on there obviously is how you want to get paid. Now, if you don't have fancy payment methods like BPAY or anything else, it is fine just to put your bank account details down there for payment details. I'm finding more and more people who are doing that anyway, so that is fine. But depending on the other payment method you use in terms of how you're set up, you might actually have some other options that are there as well. Um, PayPal, for instance, is increasingly having all sorts of ways that you can request money from people. In fact, you can even generate a QR code fairly easily um, through PayPal. But I'd say, you know, especially if it's your first time doing it, just keep it simple and just put in your bank account and payment details. You also need to specify the terms, that is, when you want to get paid. Now, like obviously you want to get paid as soon as possible, but <laughs> you want to know when you're doing an invoice, like when you want to set the payment date. Now that's going to depend on a lot of factors, but in my experience, in Australia, usually you do 14 days. Now I've noticed when trialing a few other systems, they tend to default to 15 days and some people do 30 days. Honestly, if you're going to get 30 days, um, you know, that's kind of hard. And then if they don't pay, you've got to chase them. And by that time, it's, you know, people have forgotten that. So I usually do 14 days. Um, I personally like to pay most of my bills, um, particularly for small businesses within seven days. But a seven day kind of um, stipulation on an invoice can kind of look a little bit harsh. Like um, I remember getting a bill with seven days and then, you know, with big capital letters and stars and strictly no kind of uh, further beyond that. 
Um, like people might have busy lives. They, you know, might have been on holidays or they, you know, might be, you know, waiting for the next uh, pay to come through. So I think, you know, 14 days is kind of a little bit polite. Like seven days feels a little bit um, bit crazy. But if you've negotiated seven days, then put that in. Um, and just note that with some bigger companies in particular, you know, their payments are held handled by their account section so the date you put on that invoice is quite important because that's the day they will actually get around to paying you so if you put 30 days they may not actually pay you for 30 days even though they could have paid you earlier so think about all those sorts of things but basically pick a date I usually pick about 14 days uh, two weeks which is uh, 10 business days usually um, and that's usually what I do the other big decision you have to make on an invoice, and this is one that I got wrong for many years, and it's once it's explained to you, it's really simple and easy, and you wonder why you stressed about this in the first place, is GST or not GST. You often receive invoices from people that have GST. When you first do um, an invoice, usually there'll be a field there about GST or not, and you'll kind of go, oh no, what do I do? Do I pick GST or do I not pick GST? The really easy answer and the best answer I ever got is you will know if you are registered for GST or not. You will know that and if you know you are then put down GST. Now why do I say that you are no, you will know that or not? Um, well basically um, it's if you are making less than $75,000 a year you do not have to register for GST. So if you're a, a sole trader business setting up in the first first um, instance, you do not need to register for GST. If you're earning over $75,000, it is a legal requirement for you to register for GST. Once you register for GST, that then means you have an obligation to submit the quarterly BAS statements, the business activity statements. Now, for those in business who have registered for GST and have the BAS statements, you know that that is a fair amount of paperwork to do. So... Don't do that paperwork if you don't have to do that because it means that you have an requirement then in terms of, you know, you're, you're receiving the GST, you have to acquit that. So much better to save yourself all that hassle if you don't need to register for GST, don't. Now, if you're in doubt at all about whether you've registered or not, you really can't remember and if it's stressing you out, just look up your ABN on the internet and it'll show you very clearly whether you're registered for GST or not. Anyone can search for that and anyone can see. So if you think you're not registered for GST, you probably aren't, so don't include GST on your invoice. If you're not sure and you're really worried about it, then look it up on the internet and check. If you think you're gonna earn more than $75,000 a year or you already are and you're not registered for GST, make sure you do. So that's a key thing to handle when doing your um, invoice. The other thing, um, which is another uh, trick for new players, is that most accounts departments require a PDF form of an invoice rather than a Microsoft Word or an Excel spreadsheet. I don't know why that is, but I'm assuming that's because it is means that that invoice can't be changed, and so which is a good thing. You don't want people to just change your figures. And it's probably to do with how a lot of online accounting software and other programs read data these days. So I'm assuming that's what the requirement is. But if you just do it in a form that isn't a PDF, make sure you, you convert it to a PDF before sending it through. Um, Alison says her system is very hand rollic. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'm assuming that it's not automated is the um, most important answer. Alison said insurance is also important for any business. Yes, insurance is important. Today we're talking about invoices, which is a separate issue, but you know, happy to um, discuss insurances in more detail at another time. So that's kind of what you need on an invoice and um, just to think through some of those essential elements. If there's any I've forgotten you've got questions for, please send them through. Now let's look at, you know, the how to do an invoice, you know, from the free to the paid. So in its simplest form, you can just do up a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet for an invoice noting that it's good to then convert it to a PDF, which is pretty easy. You just go save as and you convert it to a PDF before you send it on. Now, for a long time, I think I searched on the internet and I found a template I sort of liked and I used that. So it was really high tech 
not. Um, I've also um, looked at other people's templates and I've used their templates. And sometimes if I want someone to do some work for me and I know they have no idea, I'll just send that on because that's simplest and that's easiest. Now you can jazz it up a fair bit. You can put your own logo on that. It's important to make sure that you actually do change it to your own details, such as including your own ABN, your own contact details and your, your own things on those. So it's important to customize it a little bit. Microsoft also has a number of templates. I don't know if you've ever played around with uh, Microsoft templates, but they actually have some fairly good ones. So you can have one that looks a bit swish and it looks a bit nice. And of course, you know, other than paying for your, you know, Microsoft subscription, they're pretty much free and they're pretty much easier, easy. So if you're getting low levels of work as you're starting out, this is probably all you need in the first instance. And this is certainly what all I needed in my first kind of year as a freelance writer so you know pretty quick pretty much when you've been paid or not because you know you're not getting a lot of work so when that magic money comes into your bank account you're like woohoo I got paid for my cleaning writing uh, whatever it is that you're doing on the side my, my business consultancy work my course you'll know because you'll see the money in and so you're aware that that's been paid and that's all fine now, um, there are a couple of other things that you can do that are also in that free camp that are sort of starting to be a little bit more complicated than just doing your own document. Um, one thing, for instance, you may not realize is that PayPal um, now has an invoicing function. So I mentioned before that PayPal enables you to do a QR code. It's got, you can create links for people to pay you. You can create buttons for people to pay you. You can also create an invoice directly in PayPal. And I've had a little bit of a play and it seems to work quite well. You can even customize it with your logo and do a few things. So um, that's a way that you, if you are using PayPal already, that you can do that. Now, while that is free, please note that PayPal does have a certain transaction charge. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. I think it's somewhere, all of these um, are in the range of, I think, about 1.5 and 2.4, 2.5%. But just notice that any payment purchased through PayPal usually has some kind of, will often have some kind of charge attached to it. I haven't tried with the invoicing. If you just send someone money by PayPal, it's fine. But if you're using it as a payment method, they often will. Same with Stripe and Square, they also have free invoicing um, options with them. And if you already have a Stripe or a Square account and you're already using it to manage external payments, that can be quite good. And I should add too, an advantage of all these PayPal, Stripe and Square things is that you're not disclosing your, your bank account. So therefore, you know, potentially the risk of, you know, you um, uh, your account getting hacked or being defrauded is less because you're not divulging those personal details. So it may be worth that additional, uh, potential additional charge for you to do that. Then there are a number of uh, invoicing um, products that often have free introductory rates and then they'll migrate up as your usage increases to becoming a paid option. One I want to mention is Zoho Invoice. Now I'm mentioning that because I use um, Zoho One, which gives me access to, I think, about 43 different apps, including Zoho Invoice. Now, I'm not currently using it, but I will be in a couple of months. End of financial year, I'm going to be switching my systems. But if you have up to five customers, so this isn't the amount, this is your customers, Zoho Invoice is free. So if you have just a few, like... Um, main customers as you're starting out this could be a good option for you for instance when I was first doing my freelance writing um, I think I had four main customers so this would have been perfect for me um, it enables you to send it out and also enables you to track it as it's coming back and it, it looks pretty good and it's easy to use also, there's a, a new program out there called Wave, which I haven't used, um, but it bills itself as free online cloud uh, software. Like many of these things, um, you know, they often are free initially, and then as your volume increases, they become paid. Which brings me then to um, the extension of this is to the medium range specific invoicing programs. I've talked about Zoho Invoice. There's another program called Invoice 
Ninja that I've heard some people use um, and it's specifically just for invoicing but you know it's it's quite a popular program and there's also another one called Invoice Home. In fact if you google um, you know invoice programs you'll find that there's quite a lot of um, programs in this space it's quite a lot in this startup space so um, if you are wondering how to invoice you are not the only person who's been wondering that a number of people have. So that is just for invoicing. So when we're talking about invoice, it's like, you know, creating that, you know, nice tax invoice that looks good with your logo on it, sending it out, making it easy for people to pay you and then noting when it's got paid and like that's it. But the next step up is as your business grows, it's worth thinking about online accounting uh, programs and often doing that perhaps in a, in conjunction with a bookkeeper. So as you are starting to do more things like buy equipment for your business, attend networking functions for your business, um, have more and more clients for your business, have more diverse ranges of um, money that's coming into your business, you might be that next step up that you want to be able to have an accounting software system so that at the end of the financial year you can easily run a report that will make it easy for you to do tax. You can also watch it more easily to see about how your cash flow is tracking for your business so you know how your business is doing overall and it's good to actually start early about this thinking while you might start just doing a few invoices and it's just a bit of fun and it's testing whether your business is something you want to do once you get to that point where you're like yes I want to build a business here then start thinking early about getting the tools in. Don't just wait until you've got boxes and boxes of receipts in shoe boxes and feeling a bit panicked about it. At least you've got the receipts, not everyone does, but start to build that in early because one of the key problems is sometimes people are in business and they don't even know whether they're making money or not. And that can be really disheartening when you think you're doing really well only to find at the end of the financial year that you've actually got a tax bill and you're really not doing that well at all. So if you're at that stage where things are getting a bit more complicated, then think of an accounting um, online accounting tool and they will all pretty much have with them in them the ability to invoice. Now, the most intuitive and perhaps the best well known in Australia, at least at the moment, is Xero, X-E-R-O, is how it's spelt. You will have seen that, you would have seen ads for it, you would have seen people use it. Now, um, it's also for a small business is a fairly expensive option at about $50 a month. When it first came out, it was one of the cheapest, but you know their prices have been increasing a bit. Now, people who use it, they swear by it because it's very intuitive, it's very easy to use. Often when you send an invoice out, it makes it easy for people to pay. Often there's just a pay here button and people click on that and then they can automatically pay, it, you know, defaults to whatever payment method they want, whether it's bank account or credit card. And of course, you want it to make it easy for your customers to pay you, don't you? And so Zero is very easy to do that. Now, I don't use that because I'm a frugal listener and it's not the cheapest option in the market. Um, I was advised by my lovely sister, who's a bookkeeper, that um, there are other options available. And on her advice, I signed up for Sasau, which is S-A-A-S-U, and that costs $15 a month. It is a very good um, double entry bookkeeping online system. However, it is less intuitive to use than zero. And for someone like me who has never started um, learnt about accounting there was a little bit of a um, a step up uh, a bit of a learning curve for me to get onto that system I'm now onto that system I'm now fairly comfortable with it I like the fact it's also got a customer um, relationship management CRM functionality in it albeit a very basic one and so that is something that you know if you have a bit of basic knowledge about online bookkeeping and how to do invoices, that could be an option to you for you to use. Two other products that are very common in Australia are MYOB, Mind Your Own Business, which used to pretty much be the market leader uh, before Zero came along, but I think um, is perhaps lost a bit of its market dominance, and Quicken. So Quicken is also a you know, well-established player in this space. I used to think that Quicken was quite expensive, but then I uh, met a bookkeeper who actually had a corporate license and she could offer it at $20 a month. And not only that, but she knew how to use it, which is actually another good point I should add here too. Before rushing off to you know, buy a particular program, it's worth asking if you have a tax accountant or a bookkeeper it's worth asking what system they use because obviously the half of the point of having a more detailed online system is providing it to your tax accountant or bookkeeper 
at the end of the financial year and you want to have your records in a good state and one that they are comfortable viewing and if they have a preference for a particular um, online accounting system where possible and where affordable go with them and if they do have a good relationship with a particular um, online system um, chances are that they might be able to offer it to you at a special rate as well which is kind of a win-win so consider that as well, but also consider what's user friendly and what's cost effective. And finally, I want to mention the system that I am going to be moving to, which is Zoho, Z-O-H-O. -O. So Zoho um, has a number of different applications. Uh, I mentioned before that the Zoho One subscription has 43 applications and they are quite affordable. It's $43 a month for one user or up to I think 110 uh, for multiple users on your system. And what that gives you is access to over 43 apps. Now you might think, but you know, Serena, I only need the invoicing app or I only need the accounting app. That's fine. But what's really important with this is having everything integrated really allows you to grow your CRM, your contacts um, relationship management system. So for instance, say you sold some courses to someone back in January and then you did some freelance writing for someone else in March. Now, in another traditional system, you might have had your course information in one system and you might have had your freelance, you know, writing contacts in another system and they're all disparate. But this is all then put together. And then say you want to, you know, send out a um, newsletter to people or you wanted to remind yourself about, yeah, who was that person again? Um, and have they paid me or what other things? You've got all their data in one central place. And so in terms of the longevity of building your business long term, it's really important to think about the CRM. Now, you might not think you need that in terms of um, your ability just to invoice, but that is actually quite key and it is actually quite crucial um, to keep that information because these are customers. These are people who paid you. So it's really important to keep that information that is together. So there's some of this information um, there about, you know, what goes into an invoice and also how to do an invoice. Don't let the potential complexity of, oh my God, I'm building a big business and I need a detailed accounting software platform with CRM in it, stop you from doing an invoice. At its basic, it's just a document, a piece of paper that tells you people how to pay you it's really important that you do one and it's really important that you do one quickly don't stress if you don't have an ABN don't stress if you feel that your company doesn't have a logo yet or indeed you don't have a logo but do make sure that you think about things like the GST or not and also make sure that you send it through as a PDF particularly if you're sending it through to a big company thank you very much I really appreciate you tuning in to watch um, please um, follow up on replay with any questions you might have this will also be converted to a YouTube so please make sure um, to subscribe to like and comment on the YouTube YouTube as well. Thank you.